Character 2.0 is live on OpenArt and there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to show you. Let's dive right into it. As always, we're going to go to the top menu here and click on Create Character. You can also access it on the side menu as well. First and foremost, you're going to notice there's only two sections now. Start with image, start with description. And that's because you don't need a whole bunch of images now to create consistent characters. So what we're going to do is create one of each and also you can upgrade an existing character. And now you're not limited to only like human like characters. The previous one did people well, but non humans, it was kind of hit and miss. But with character 2.0, that's a thing of the past. So let's go ahead and start with description first. And I want to create a character that's not exactly photorealistic, kind of in between 3D and hyperrealistic. And we're going to create a biomechanical warrior. So to start, I'm just going to do something very general. I'm okay with the model being creative for me. Okay. So I don't have anything in particular, but I do want the warrior to be wearing a worn and weathered armor. He's gruff and rugged with a mustache and beard, and he's muscular with fierce eyes. You'll notice we have some options for models here. So we've got open art default, C dream 4.54 nano banana and nano banana pro. I'm going to go ahead and choose nano banana pro. I really love using the model. As mentioned, I don't really want the photorealistic look. I'm going for more of a 3d CGI type of feel. We're going to go ahead and generate some previews. Once it's finished generating, you'll see four selections here. So if we, if we click on the magnifying glass, you can see we have our warrior here. I really liked his uh, Thor-like hammer here. Maybe we'll select that. Let's take a look at the other ones. Oh, this one's cool too. I love that weapon. I don't know what that is. Looks devious. And the third option here, kind of Fortnite-ish, uh, this style. And the last one here. Yeah, you know what? I'm leaning towards the first and second one, but I think I'll go with the second one here. So let's select the second one. And to build your character is way cheaper than before. It's only a hundred credits. So we're going to go ahead and build that character. Now it should only take a few minutes. I'd say about two to three minutes to complete. But now what's going to happen is that we're going to get a front view, close up view, full body view and back view. This will give us a preview of the character. So if we're not happy with any of the angles, we can change it. Once completed, you'll get four views, front view, close up, full body and back view. And you can always regenerate it if you're not happy with it. So if we open this one up, we get a nice close up front view of his face and the back view here. We want to make sure everything looks legit, right? So yeah, we got his weapon here. Some weird contraption on the back looks pretty good. Although this should be weapons, <laughs> but I'll accept it for now. And if everything looks good, all that's left to do is click on looks good here. We can name our character. And for whatever reason, I want to name him Kroger. <laughs> he looks like a Kroger. Now this part is optional. You can add a backstory. So I just put Kroger is a mighty, put a Y there, warrior that protects people of Valencia. This is a fantasy story I've been working on for a while, trying to develop characters. Totally optional, but just to give you a little teaser, this is actually going to be part of something bigger. That's all I can say for now. Then we can just click on save character. And just like that, our character is ready to create visuals. If we want to make a music video with Kroger here, lip sync or magic effects. So we're going to go ahead and just click on create character visual. So now we're here in the character page and I'm going to open up our prompt here and you see that we have Kroger already being called with an at and we have auto enhance on. We put this on by default so that the background's not so plain, but if you feel like things are changing too much and your character is being altered, I encourage you to toggle this off. Typically, I like to do something simple just to test that the character looks good. So I'm going to put a simple prompt. Kroger is attacking with his sword on the battlefield. You can use up to five reference images, but I'm going to go into this a little bit later when we've created more characters. If you click on here, you can upload a reference image or 
take it from your generation history. Generation modes, fast and quality. Fast is good enough, but I always like top quality. And in terms of output size, you can select any of the common aspect ratios and you have an option of 2K and 4K resolutions. I'm just gonna leave it on 2K and the model is on auto to start, but you can select between either the original Nano Banana Pro or Seed Dream 4 or 4.5. I'm gonna go ahead and select Nano Banana Pro because I like using that model. And we're just gonna create like four images and by the way, you'll notice that I have my preview images here when we were generating those previews. Let's say you wanna come back and use this guy's a character. You can upload this image as your reference image to start and build another character. So here we have Kroger in action with his weird saw-like sword. I don't know what that is. It looks really cool though. Everything looks consistent from the gear-like details to his weapon, his beard. Very satisfied with the results. Now we're gonna create a character starting from an image and I'm gonna select Nano Banana Pro. And sticking with the biomechanical theme, I'm gonna create a character that's more animal-like just to show you all that character 2.0 can do different types of characters. I'm going to paste in this prompt. It's quite lengthy and I did this ahead of time because I have a very specific look that I'm going for. I'm gonna select a portrait aspect ratio at 2K and we'll generate, let's say, four images. Now in terms of prompting your character, you want to focus mostly on the subject be very detailed on things that they are wearing, accents they might have, clothing, armor. You don't have to have an environment. I often use a white or a gray background and you also want a front facing image, but I'm leaning towards this one. Now it's not exactly front facing, that's okay, because I want to give you a tip on creating multiple angles for a very specific reason. But we'll go with this guy and then we're going to go into the side menu here and select camera angle control. I'm going to slide this reference image here and we're gonna make sure this is on Open Art Ultra and we're going to select create all. We can ignore everything else and just click create all. And what's gonna happen here is that we're going to get multiple angles of this character. I'll just show you a few of them. Here's a rear view, sort of an angled front view. We have a close up and another angled view so on and so forth. Coming back to the character create page, we're going to start with an image this time. We're gonna click this area and go into the history and I'm gonna select one of the front views here. Yeah, let's go with this guy. And ideally you can take those other angles here and import those ones. So if I wanted to put the front facing one here, I could do that. However, I'm just going to click on build character for now. And I want to show you why we made those multiple angles. Let's take a look at the front view. You see we have sort of a half body perspective, a close up perspective. He looks really mean, I love it and then we'll have our full body and rear view here. And actually the first preview generations, I'm really happy with, but as I said, let's say I wasn't happy with the back view here. I can click on upload button here and I can take something from my history and let's say I like the back of this one, click on confirm and it'll import it into this one instead. And the reason I bring that up is because this preview area may not be perfect and you may have to regenerate. So if you're gonna do that, you might as well work on the reference images yourself, just like I showed you with the camera angle control. That way you can make adjustments, make some edits, come up with a data set that you're happy with. I'm good with everything here and we're gonna go ahead and click looks good. And we're gonna call this guy Rage and I don't know, I'm gonna put Rage is an ancient warrior that protects the depths of the jungle. Let's click on save character. Now we can save our character here into our character library. Let's create some visuals. And I'm going to prompt for it. Rage is leaping in the air with his hands over his head and yelling. The environment is an ancient biomechanical jungle. Once again, I'm going to go with the same settings as last time and generate a few images here. 
And here we have Rage leaping into the air with his hands over his head yelling. In terms of his armor and special markings, they look fairly consistent as far as I can see. It even keeps the scratches on his left chest there. You see that it carries over. Very happy with the results. Now let's talk about your legacy characters that were made with the previous character feature. So I've got a few characters here and there's a few key things I want to talk about here. The older ones you'll see has updates available. If you go to the three dots and click it, you'll see there's an upgrade path, okay? Now I will tell you because this was based off the old Flex dev model, if you upgrade to 2.0, your character may not look the same. There might be some slight changes, whether it's the details or the overall look. So if you're happy with your current character, leave it as is. I wouldn't touch it. Now that being said, if you're curious and you want to try the upgrade just to see how it looks, and let's say you don't like the way it looks, you can go back here and under the three dots, you can roll back to the previous version. The only thing is you're going to lose the credits that you use to do the upgrade, all right? Additionally, previously you could not edit the data set of your character, but now you'll see if you go into edit, I can come back into the screen and regenerate reference images or add ones as we looked at earlier, should you decide to change things up. So I repeat, this is very important. If you have a character and you like the old version, leave it alone. Don't bother with the upgrade path. That being said, if you want to go ahead and upgrade, all you have to do is click on upgrade. And you can do the same steps as we did previously if you want to add additional references. I encourage you to do that because it'll help build your character more accurately. That being said, I'm going to click on build my character and I want to see if the new character 2.0 will give me supporting reference images that are usable. This character is inspired by the Spartans and I actually named him Leonidas. Here's our front image here. We can't really see his face because I do want his helmet to be on all the time. You can see his face much more better here with the close up full body image here and a rear perspective image with the cape that they often wear. So yes, everything worked out great. But again, if for whatever reason, these previews don't work well, use the camera angle feature. That is a great tool to have. We're going to go ahead and click on looks good and we'll keep him as Leonidas, but we'll put 2.0 and I'll leave the backstory empty for now and we'll just save the character. I'm going to go ahead and create some simple images once again. And I have Leonidas is attacking with his sword with two hands battling an enemy knight on the battlefield. Oh, I really like this image here. Now he's only holding it with one hand, but we see that very close interaction. We see his intensity in his face. Love this image. There we go. He's holding his sword with two hands here and attacking the knight. Now, before we move on to some tips on how to use character 2.0, I do want to point out that with the old Flux Dev Trainer, you did have various options to like keep the clothing the same, the weight, you had image to image, pose reference, all this stuff. I'm going to switch to my new character, Bella, and you'll see that you don't really have those options. One of the main reasons why is because the models now are very powerful. You don't need all those conditioning methods. However, as mentioned before, if we click on this area here, you do have several options. Let's start off with something simple and I'm going to prompt for Bella dancing in the street. And as a result of the prompt, I like this image. There's a couple more that I like that look pretty good. I do like her expression and the way her arms are positioned, but because this one's full body, let's go with this one. So I'm going to start this image. And one thing I do want to point out as of now, you can't drag and drop your image just yet. 
This is a bug that we're working on fixing, hopefully by the time I publish this video. However, we can just call upon it by going to our history as we normally do and select it just a few extra clicks. And the first thing I want to kind of touch on here is the previous character version. If you had, let's say a photorealistic image, but you wanted to change it to anime or use a different model, you couldn't do that. With character 2.0, it's not a problem. So we're gonna leave the original prompt in here and then prompt the style is anime. I'm going to generate four more images here and then we're going to change the style to let's say Minecraft. Once again, here's the original and then here's the converted one to anime. You see that it's adopted the style now. You do see the background change because I didn't state to maintain the background, but you can prompt for that and maintain those certain details. You can consider this a new way to do image to image. Here's the Minecraft version, but you do see like she still has sort of a face there, but the second generation looks a lot more like Minecraft with a square blocky face. Now we're gonna remove the reference and I'm going to pick a reference of an outfit that I used in a previous video. We're going to click on history and I have this outfit that we're going to use. And now you can call upon the outfit by typing in at and you see we have image one here with the outfit. I'm gonna put change her outfit to image one. By default, the original reference images you use, your character is always going to be wearing that outfit. You can either just prompt for your character to be wearing something different, but I find it's a lot more helpful to use a reference image. Here's one example with the full outfit. It's got everything that was included in the reference image. Here the skirt is actually more accurate here compared to the other one. You see it's got a little bit of fancy material, which I still think looks good and another variation. We're excited to bring you this update, my friends. And like I said, this is part of a bigger project that we're working on behind the scenes. And if I can give you a little teaser without saying much, let me just say character worlds. That's it. Now, if you want a different perspective on character creation, make sure to check out our guest Bob Doyle's video that he just posted today as well. You'll likely be seeing more videos from Bob, so go ahead and show him some love in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and as always, my friends, happy creating.